Some of you may call them a rival on the field, but when it comes to in the courtroom in this fight against the ACC, call them a partner. <laughs> and uh, we've got Clemson on board of the Florida State fight against the ACC and with the two biggest members of the conference with the most uh, football prowess, the TV ratings and the wins in the win column. The ACC is in trouble. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Seminoles live right here at the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you all stopping by. Leave those comments and questions there in the chat. Consider the Super Chat contribution as well. George is here from the Renegade Report, and we will give you the specifics there, but it's a destination that you need on a regular basis. And, of course, big game, James Coleman, Florida State fullback, and sports uh, Den Media Group. James, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Um, um, a lot of news going on. I feel I feel great with the position that Florida State is in. It feels great to be right. Um, it feels um, great to kind of you know see things moving in the right position. And even if things did stay, um, 2024, 2025, I could be a Gator fan and be in 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 hell. Because I don't know if you saw that the SEC announced that they're staying with the eight the eight um eight team SEC schedule, and literally mm -hmm. it's going to be the exact same as it is this season, except for if you were you know flip. So like for Florida fans, sorry man, um you guys gotta you guys gotta deal with that again and <laughs> stuff so like it's be an interesting year for you guys. Um, two years. I, Shout out to I, Billy. Yes. Just saw the headline right before we came on that they released their 25 schedule. I didn't get a chance to look into it. So they're giving Florida another exactly. schedule like that? Except for except for they don't play one, they, they play another sisters of the pool. Um and I love this school that they're playing, but they play Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. Um shout out to you know the, the year after Florida gets rid of um, their DEI department, diversity, equity, and inclusion, they go and play historically black. College or university that they'll give a million dollars to, um, so that they can get that W. So, uh, but they play USF, Miami, FAMU, Florida State. That's their out of conference, and then they have um, the same schedule um, coming back. It's going to be um, quite um, quite interesting for them. Yeah, I've never understood that. I've like had serious arguments with my Florida Florida people I know that they defend that eight game commerce schedule. They're like, we already have the toughest schedule on the planet. We can't go to nine games. And to what James was just saying, I explained to him, dude, if they went to a nine game SEC schedule, Kentucky wouldn't be able to schedule four F FCS appointments running up to you. You know, when you've already played Florida State, LSU, whatever the case may be. But yeah, Florida is totally screwed by their natural rivals. You play Florida State, you play LSU every year, you know, and that's on top. So it's like, Jordan, you know, they're, they're just going to have tough, you know, a tough sledding going forward. But, yeah, I, I agree. I would have went to nine games. and uh, But, no, Florida stuck with their administration scheduling them harder than the rest of the conference year in, year out. <laughs> Good for them. Chris Frazier showing up from Spear Addicts. Good to have Chris here. Chris, what's going on today? I'm trying to get done with everything so that I can actually do the show, Mark, to be honest. Well, we – uh we hope that's the case and hope that happens soon for you. Yeah, I'm about, should be about another 120 seconds, but I'll be good. So I got to tell you, James, we'll start with you in terms of this Clemson uh, release and, and going to South Carolina court against the ACC. Mm -hmm. Florida State has obviously led the charge. They've been the most out front. They were the first. They were the most public and, and all of that. But Clemson came in strong here with a lot of uh, mm -hmm. a lot of verbiage, like nonsensical reading, uh, wrong, uh, inconsistent with plain language of that agreement, which we've been hearing for years that the grant of rights uh, verbiage is very loose and maybe awkwardly, clumsily put together, maybe for a reason, maybe you just bad uh, legal work on their part, uh, unenforceable, unconscionable. Uh, Clemson came pretty strong with this. Yeah, a lot of, lot of, um, lot of dramatic words. Um, victim language is what I always love to say about <laughs> it, but um, a lot of truth to it. And really what happens is it stems from this. Um, and I don't think Florida State, Florida State, while we were taking the charge, 
sometimes you want somebody else to go out in front and so that you can see what obstacles they're going to put. And one of the things that I've said on your show, said on numerous shows, the more that somebody has to let this play out in the public, the less of a case they really have. Because if it were me and I really knew I had something, I don't want you to be picking this apart. I'll see you in court or when we get the discovery and when we do these things. But the ACC literally played out all of this stuff against Florida State. The problem is you can't lay out a plan against Florida State that didn't have a different plan for Clemson, that didn't have a different plan for North Carolina. All the things that you're saying have to be true. And where Clemson, where ACC is messed up is some of the things that they're saying, they're kind of backtracking and you're going to have to stay on this. I joke with people all the time on social media saying, I would never do, I'm not going to do any crimes anyway in my older age. I don't want to get in any of those troubles. Jail ain't meant for me. But it's a lot of people on social media tell them, I would never do a crime with you because you don't remember what you said five minutes ago, let alone what you would say like when you get up on the stage, stand and somebody's cross-examining you. The ACC has already tripped themselves up with the amendments that they've had. So the, whether it's the initial lawsuit that you filed in North Carolina, where now you're saying that wasn't really like a fiscal one, that was just me just doing this to, you know, you consistently changing your tune. The biggest thing, though, is that Clemson's coming in and stating that you didn't, you said that you had a vote to move forward and proceed with a lawsuit against Florida State. We didn't vote for anything. We didn't receive that. So now you've got a, a member institution who, like Florida State, couldn't vote. They already put those things in there. They, they, they took away our voting. Right, I get it. Makes sense. But Clemson is saying, you didn't take away our voting rights. We never voted to move forward with this. That's one of the things that they're they're going, going against. Now, Clemson also said that they don't, not Clemson, excuse me, the ACC also stated in North Carolina court that they don't have a fiduciary responsibility to the members. The members have a fiduciary responsibility to them. So now Clemson's arguing, since this is what you stated in an amended complaint, we don't, we're not obligated to the buyout. You, we're not, you don't own our rights if we leave the conference. It's a lot of different things that they're laying out and what's going to happen. And I think I've stated this numerous times that if, if the ACC would have just a few weeks ago, went on ahead and just said, and they still have time to do this. And they've amended it to where a buyout is potential. All they should say is just say, hey man, 150, get out. Cut your losses. 150, Clemson's probably going to be like, you know what, fine, we'll pay whatever, something close to that. Somebody else might want to do, you three to five schools. But now you have that money in, now you can actually have a real vote um, about these different things. And you can go use that money to go attract the next big thing. Because right now, um, and shout out to um, Tony, Tony put up a great graphic. You're standing to lose 60% of the watch football games in your conference between FSU, Notre Dame, and Clemson. Don't care. If, forget if you think Florida State is just Washington. He used this from 2016 all the way to current. So we sucked during a lot of those years, and we still made up for 20% of that as Florida State. Clemson makes up another 20%. Lose 60% of anything. Like tomorrow, Mark, if you lose 60% of your income, you're in, the world of, you're in the world of hurt. If you lose 60% of your health, this ain't a video game. It's probably dead. <laughs> you probably did if you lose 60% of the L or it's rapidly coming. 60% of your business is going to truly affect you. 20% of your business is going to truly affect you. So we see, we know no matter what, the end is coming. And that's what it's like. You can't force me to be here. We're going to fight you tooth and nail in court. You don't want a lot. People are saying the best thing they can hope for is a long, drawn out court case. No. It's not. ESPN is seeing this in 2027. They have to make a ruling on whether they want to renew the ACC agreement. And right now you have zero leverage and you have nothing to replace this. And that's what I think they need to be trying to figure out at this point is who's coming in to replace these two to three teams that we know we're going to lose. And I would even argue that that 60% is even more damaging than it could be otherwise. So let's say if they lost 60% of the league, eight out of the 14 teams, roughly, uh, you would have an opportunity possibly to go out and try to replace those positions. But you are losing 60% of the attention, the eyeballs, the media, right? You're losing 60% in just three components. 
And and so you you have no options out there over the landscape of college football to replace Notre Dame, Florida State, and Clemson. Those type of schools and programs do not exist out there. Absolutely. Now, the best we could do is try to kind of capture some rivalries or built-in geographical things that over time can grow with them. Um, I would suggest, again, let's say just using this number, 150 Florida State, 150 Clemson, Notre Dame wouldn't have to pay what we pay because football is not involved in it. But let's say some way to secure 400, 400 to half a, half a billion dollars um, to be able to, and, and people wanting to leave. I'm going to recruit UCF and USF away from the Big 12 because now you have the I, the battle of I-4, a national rivalry. You don't, you, you don't lose the state of Florida. UCF, USF, Miami could be something that you kind of research. And I will put the energy into Miami, um, whichever Carolina school that stays, that's the biggest, and maybe trying to help Syracuse become, you know, which is a moot point, but doing that. You have SMU in Texas. I'm trying to go get Houston for somebody like that. Houston's played good ball. Um, they've got a decent brand. Now I have something in Texas. We have the two teams in California already between Stanford and Cal. I know not moving the needle, but at least – you have something out there. And I'm going to go try to get West Virginia trying to poke. Really, it's more so. And then my bad, I didn't bring this up. Clemson, really, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when the ACC basically said we're inferior to the SEC. We'll take less of a cut for the college football invitational than what you guys, Big Ten, y'all are the power to. We'll stay back here and enjoy our place. We're better than, we're better than the Big 12. But at the same time, we're not you. And when Clemson saw that, there's no reason to be here. So the only thing that I would suggest the ACC do is you do feel at least you're better than the Big 12. Go post the Big 12 and, and maybe one of the better schools in the AAC. We obviously want to get to George and Chris, so I'll put a couple of my counterpoints uh, just to expand on some of your stuff uh, there, James, after they get a chance to talk. So go ahead, George. Yeah, man, he's covered a lot of uh, salient points. Look, I mean, I think any three of us could go for two hours <laughs> and talk about this. Uh, I think one point that I'll kind of point out is, you know, Clemson filed suit against ACC. That's the hugest point. That's been the biggest change since we've talked last. Uh, but what does that necessarily mean? And James just alluded to it. Clemson references Florida State's loss lawsuit multiple times within their lawsuit. Um, so right now you have two parties, um, rumors of sharing notes and actually working together behind the scenes, whether you want to believe that's true or not. All these court documents are all public knowledge, public knowledge. So you've got two universities now, um, you know, all in to defeat the ACC to get out. Uh, and they don't have to have an absolute win. Neither Florida State nor Clemson has to absolute win. They just have to get out. And as you alleged, alleged to, there's no there's no team out there to replace them. They have all the leverage. Uh, one of the things I was wondering, okay, well, they didn't get to beat South Carolina, the courthouse due to them not having the same sunshine laws. They were able to do things a little bit more quieter, beat the ACC to the courthouse. But 10 minutes before we came on live, uh, it broke that Clem or the ACC has in fact filed suit against Clemson in North Carolina. So now they have four cases going on already just with two schools. So should a third school, bam, now we we see their strategy. You know, if, it doesn't matter whether they beat you or not. They're going to file in two states. So say another school. Now you've got six cases going on, all that can all use everything the AC says against it in each one. And another to what James was saying that I've been saying over and over again, they completely contradict themselves in every filing. So their North Carolina argument renders their Florida suit obsolete and their Florida argument renders their North Carolina suit obsolete when Florida state attacks everything, you know, issue by issue with precedence. Um, and it's really funny. The only about the only thing I've seen from the suit against Clemson in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina is the cover page. And on the cover page, it's like, they think they have this slam dunk and it's a quote from Clemson's president back in 2016 saying how happy he is and, and proud of the ACC for, you know, extending their relationship with ESPN and ushering in this brand new conference channel. As if that's some evidence like, look, you signed, you were on board. How long did it take them to deliver that conference channel? Wasn't it like five years late and a complete and utter disgrace and failure? It's like, so uh, it's just pretty hilarious. Uh, and y'all mentioned how they have to make a decision. Well, that decision date has been lined out. It's 
February of 2025. This isn't years down the road. This is like very, very soon. So the ACC, the closer they run up to that date, they're finding themselves in trouble. I think they imagine somehow they'd keep FSU and Clemson long enough to hit that extension date. Uh, but it's just not going to happen. And I'd love to hear what Chris said. And like I said, we could all keep going. But those are the two kind of things that really uh, were on my mind. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I think it's all it's all going to come down to who's next. I don't think it it's not it's not hurting Florida State by any means that um, Clemson just you know also uh, sued the ACC, but does it really help Florida State? Yeah, I guess. Um, but I don't think Florida State necessarily needs Clemson or anybody else to win their lawsuit. I don't think they went into this thinking <clears throat> that we got to have X amount of people so that we can win. Does it better your odds or better your chances? Probably so. Um, I'm glad that someone got off with their hands and decided to join in uh, and realized that this is not what it's supposed to be. It's not what was promised to any of the members of the ACC. Um, just wondering who's next uh, to get off of their hands and uh, do something about it. I will say uh, that I had said this, I, don't, I think it was hours before Clemson had dropped that they were going to, um, well, they didn't say they were going to, before the, the lawsuit was filed. Uh, I had told people hours before that that there was a certain university that was helping Florida State um, journalist-wise and also law-wise was doing some digging to find out if some of these things were true. Um, and that's who I was talking about. Uh, but obviously, I didn't want to put out there who it was. Not that anybody's big's paying attention, but maybe. So I didn't say anything about whom, just that don't be surprised if tomorrow there's a third school. I, I wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll say that here. Um, I don't have a show today. So it, don't be surprised if you see another one. So it's it's coming. I don't have much more on it because James uh, covered a, a pretty good portion. Uh, George also covered the rest of it as far as like ESPN's got to make a decision by February 2025. It, all of this is no merit if seven or eight teams step up and say, look, now that we've seen all of this come out, I don't think this is the conference for us. Um, and now they have multiple reasons why they should come out. And it's also so that some of them don't get in trouble as well. So side with who's going to get you out of this instead of who's going to keep you stuck in it. So I, I'm ready for it all to go down. I want it to go to discovery. It's never going to happen, but I want it to um, because I already know a lot of what Florida State's got. Um, it's not conspiracies. It's not uh, a, a possibility. It's it's all factual evidence. Um, so it hasn't even went to discovery. And I think with what they've already got, finding on their own uh, is enough to either cripple or eliminate this conference within itself. So I'm wondering when Florida State makes those comments to the ACC is like, are you sure you want to take this the, the full run? I, I think there's going to be a, a great conversation that's had well, on our side and for the members, but for the ACC conference, I don't think it's going to be so great. I think they're just doing what their legal team's telling them to do, and they don't think anything's going to happen, or at least they're praying that it doesn't. Um, but I think once everybody starts realizing what evidence is actually there and what Florida State's already got, and also what Clemson has already gotten, um, and I think Clemson was very smart by making theirs as simple as they did, because then when there's amendments made, you can start kicking them in the teeth the same way that Florida State did. It's every time you come at me, I come up with you something better. It's just playing chess. When one takes a pawn, you take a knight. Like, it's just doing what they can. So, looking forward to how both of them end up. But the ACC is a joke. And anybody that doesn't believe that, I, that's your right. But it's not a good conference, and they haven't done its members right. And that's factual based off of the numbers. Like, just – Pay attention. They didn't do their job for us, so why should we do our job for them? I I look at it like a union because that's what a conference is in a you know in a big way. All these members are just like you being a part of a union. If your union is messing you over, your your union rep. Oh, 
think we might have lost him. I want to add one thing before he pops up because you know what he's there. He is. You're back. You're back, Chris. We lost you there for a little bit. Hey, Chris, you there? Go ahead, George. Yeah, no, I was just going to say brilliant points he brought up and kind of the way I think that when that third school gets added, that people have to think about the fourth, the fifth, a lot of this discovery and the things Florida State's talking about that the ACC is trying to hide. Guess what? These schools all have a different piece of the puzzle piece. And that piece where Clemson, um, you know, said, hey, look, we didn't get invited to the meeting. So what is the third school going to have to say about the proceedings of that meeting? So that's kind of the big thing, kind of what I was pointing. And I loved everything Chris said. And that just, it's absolutely true. That third school pops. You also, great. That's just there again. And you have to remember everything that you said in each one of the different places. Mm -hmm. You have to remember what was filed, what your retorts were. And it's kind of like you're a history major, um, whether you like it or not. Germany's, mess, Germany's big mistake wasn't, you know, joining with Japan and Japan attacking the United States. Germany's biggest mistake was turning and trying to get Russia. Now you're fighting the battle on three fronts as opposed to really just one. If they were to handle Europe, then you go and try to handle something. But the problem is, again, they could have handled this a lot more diplomatically and they probably wouldn't be in the position that they're in. Now, one of the reasons why, um, you know, they're saying they can't let people see the GOR, you can't see the ESPN contract because they're afraid of trade secrets or things of that nature. And really what people are gonna do is pick it apart and try to compare it to industry standards. And that's really what you do. And the problem is even the buyer is so, con so different than everybody else's. Clemson puts this in theirs, the Big Ten's um, buyout. You know why the Big Ten has such a low buyout of zero? because they actually are handling fiduciary responsibility to their members. Why would you leave the Big Ten? Every, all your needs are taken care of consistently with competence. The Big 12, the amount equals the revenues distributed to the party member for the final two years of its membership in the conference. So basically, if you got 50 million this year and last year, it'd be 100 million. That's what the buy, but there is a clear, fair buy -in. that's just not a stupid number. The SEC. You give two years in advance, it's 30 million. You give less than two years, it's 40 million. If you have no notice, which in theory, you know, Florida can say, bump this. I'm not playing this hard ass schedule two years in a row. Get me out of this conference. And it only costs them $45 million. And so again, when you're looking at who are your peers, your peers don't have the same things because they're actually doing, and you don't see, Everybody's just trying to vacate and leave. The Big 12 had two people leave to, and to go to the SEC, but that was, you know, for, re for, for various reasons to get even more money. But the problem, the craziest thing in all of this that I really love and why I'm feeling this is everybody keeps saying everybody's lawyers. Everybody's, but they don't realize that uh, the lawyers drafted this crappy document of the GOR in the agreements. <laughs> there are very good lawyers in this, on this plan, two of which I know, I, I know a lot of them. I'll give you two for you to follow. Rohan Law, R-O-H-A-N, L-A-W-P-C, that's Doug Rohan, he's very good at this. Danielle Kelly, who's done very well with civil suits, she sued the government, she sued the state of Florida before it's been successful, that's D-K-E-L-L-E-Y 21. You can go check them out and do those different things, but I can promise you, a lot of you guys, anybody, it's a reason why cases get broken, why people don't want things to go in the state of Florida for people to, you know, go up and potentially be in the Sunshine State laws because cases are broken open by regular everyday individual people who just sit back and have time to read and highlight. Hmm, this looks interesting. And then they tweet it, and the next thing you know, somebody else is being able to come. Do you realize who wins cases? Paralegals. Paralegals are not lawyers. They're people who their job is to stick their nose in the book or case law and bring up the reasons why the people who are lawyers can do that. It's the same thing as surgeons and doctors. You want a good surgeon and a doctor, but you damn sure better hope you got some good he got some good nurses and um and or physicians assistants and things so that you can make sure you're done properly. So it's a very fun thing. It's fun to see this moving forward. And as I keep telling people, 
And South and Clemson's gonna do the same thing. The HBC is gonna take their time to 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 reply. They'll always reply at the last minute. The other schools are gonna always have an instant reply right away because they're going to push. And what's gonna probably what they're gonna probably end up doing is forcing the judge to force them to have to push and respond a lot faster than what they normally are. James, you made two points right out of the gate that I wanted to maybe magnify a little bit because maybe some people missed them since you just kind of touched on them, but to really bring these to light. So it was announced in the last two days with the new college football playoff uh, format and model going forward from 2026 through 2031. So that's six seasons that the SEC and the Big Ten are going to receive $21 million per school. The ACC said $13 million. So maybe at first glance, it's like, yeah, that's a big difference, 21 million, 13 million, but these schools are huge. It's $8 million. What's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. There's 18 schools in the Big Ten. They're all making $8 million more than ACC schools. That's $144 million in one playoff. It's a six year contract. That's $864 million that the Big Ten will earn over the course of this contract, $864 million that the ACC will not earn. So just doing the math right there. Second point that James hit on that uh, because you kept going with a number of things, maybe is not uh, getting through to everyone here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In terms of how we all have viewed how conferences work for all the time that we've covered sports, watched sports, is that they have buy-in from the members. They have regular board meetings. They discuss issues. They uh, give their pros and cons. They work together. They vote on those things. And what Clemson brought to light here in the last 24 hours was the ACC just acted against Florida State. They did not bring in Clemson and the other 13 members of the conference to say, what do you think about this? We Conferences act as members together that discuss and vote and act on issues, not that the conference just runs off amok by itself and attacks one of its own members without the other members having any uh, say in that action. No, without and a doubt. With really big issues. Like, yeah, with big issues, they have to, it's in, it's in their Bible. Like you literally, like you created this business entity, and I believe it's a nonprofit, which is even crazier to do that. With nonprofit, you literally have to lay out how you're going to operate when situations like this happen, and you state in your bylaws that you have to have a vote, and you literally did not come to a vote. You you broke your own rules by suing somebody with anticipation that they were going to try to break away from. And the hardest thing that they're going to have to do now, especially because of what they stated in the state of Florida, that the North Carolina lawsuit was not, uh, which is basically stating that, oh, that was kind of a fake lawsuit in layman's terms. That's basically what they stated in their amended complaint in the state of Florida. We did that um, without, because you can't sue, because the biggest thing in all of this, you can't sue somebody for what you think that they're about to do. It doesn't work like that. They've scheduled numerous, they, they said that we saw that they were doing a emergency board of trustees meeting. And basically we assumed that they were gonna do this because even in that board of trustees meeting, when they knew that the lawsuit was coming, they still hadn't acted yet. Florida State still did act when they had their board of trustees meeting, which again, you showed your hand. You, you literally, these are just things that you, and then went back and tried to have a, a, um, a vote, which you didn't have a vote. And it's just, again, it's, it's a lot of just sloppy paperwork. And it's, um, it, it, it is, again, it's trying to keep somebody in an abusive relationship, but um, it's not going to work. I don't understand why they're doing this, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, I do understand why they're doing it. I just think there was, there's a better way to handle this. One better way to handle this would have been Boo Corgan with the same tears that he cried when North Carolina State won the ACC champion basketball championship, go on ESPN and fight vehemently for Florida State. 
and for why for why the ACC champion should be in there when you were the president of the college football limitation. Instead, you decided to not do that, which is fine. That's your right. But you did not. But that right there alone, that would have given us another chunk of money because Louisville would have went to the um, to the to the Orange Bowl to play Georgia. Florida State would have been in the college football playoff. If Florida State wins, you get two. You get an extra check. But right now, you're starting off with those two checks right there. Um, bigger than that, now coming in negotiating for the next phase of the college football invitational, you said we're going to take less money. The HBC at every step has not done what they need to do to prove that they're in the best interest of the of the member schools. They're trying to maintain status quo and just be happy with what they're giving. And that's not where Florida State, Clemson, Notre Dame, I'll throw in Miami eventually and some other places. They're not making moves to just be status quo. Now, North Carolina really doesn't care about football like that. They care more. They're North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, basketball institutions. Great basketball institutions. Baseball, too, if you want to throw baseball in there as well. Boston College is just a happy to be here guy. Syracuse ain't been good since Jim Brown. Jokes. Donovan McNabb was a pretty good football player, too. But the point is, when you see the, the expanse of college football, the building of football-only facilities, the building of indoor practice facilities, the building of, of, of just trying to have these uh, immaculate facilities for athletes, the recruiting budgets, the things that go into it, there are only a few schools in the ACC who are truly trying to aspire to be at the top. And you have to align yourself in a conference with more people who are like you. And that's just not happening in the ACC today. Jackson, we appreciate your loyalty. Jackson has provided the Instagram and the YouTube links and uh, also the X slash Twitter links for Big Game James Coleman so you can catch James at all those destinations on social media. Uh, Jackson has done the same for our other guys here. I uh, want to make sure we're not missing Chris if he's with us. I'm here. Oh, you're back. Good, good. Uh, don't want to shut you out at all. Just didn't know if you were back with us, Chris. Uh, yeah, I think, a, I think a really interesting point of what James was saying Um which we talked about this a little bit uh, on the, on George's show the other night, and then we talked about it on James' show as well. It you first start off as the ACC is you don't get the votes that are necessary to to sue us, and you say that you didn't have to because it wasn't material. But then you go back and get the votes in January because you said it went from being non-material to material. But they got the votes at the necessary time. And by their opinion, this is what's the funniest part. In their opinion, they did not need the vote to make the lawsuit against Florida State and North Carolina at the time that they did it. The problem is, if you look at the initial complaint, what's more material than what we have a problem with? There, there's, no, there's nothing more material than money the last time that I checked. That's just me, though. I mean, what does money usually do for people? What does it do for conferences? What does it do for anyone? It gains materialistic things, whether it be standalone facilities, upgrades to your facilities. All those things matter. So I don't know how it becomes more material than that, but whatever. Um, it, my biggest issue is, is I think that the ACC is doing everything in their power to try to hold on to Something that's just going to happen whether they like it or not. I, I, I mean, best case scenario, fine, you win. You win. Now tell us what we got to pay to get out. <laughs> exactly. Great. Okay, you won. We don't get out for free or we don't get out for $30 million, But what's the price for us to get out again? And then it's going to turn into how many people are going to jump in as far as to, to either dissolve it or just to pay them whatever it is so that they can get out of it. I don't really care what happens to the ACC because it does, where have they showed any loyalty, loyalty to its members? Like every time we turn around, the ACC has fallen short. And now you're getting to the point where you're falling short to G5 conferences. Like that's what's getting sad. I, I watch 
wasn't the year that since he went into the playoffs and then Liberty or some, someone was able to get in there from a G5 side. Their conference fought tooth and nail to get them in. Now they got blown out once they got in there, but they still got them in there. Their, their conference fought for them. Our conference doesn't fight for us in any scenario. They don't even acknowledge that Florida State, Clemson, Miami, North Carolina, even the money that they make them, they don't even acknowledge to fight for it. I don't understand what person out there could look at this situation and say, well, you signed a contract, deal with it. I don't know how many people realize how long contracts are, that they're stated for 10, 20, 30 years. But due to people not withholding their end of the contract, contracts for more than one party, it is not just for, oh, you have to do this part. No, there's promises on both sides. Everybody keeps acting as if the ACC has executed this contract to perfection. They have done everything that they promised us. They are going to defend us. They're going to keep putting us out there. They're going to give us the best opportunities because those are the things that they say. The problem is, is you've admitted it just again. We are just now getting to the first um, meeting or whatever you want to call it law in their lawsuit, which will probably get stayed and all that great stuff. But you just told the entire world one more time, we aren't worth what the Big Ten and the SEC is. Well, my question is, it's probably true that you're not. But my question is, is whose fault is that? Because it's not Florida State's fault. It's not Clemson's fault. Now, if you want to blame anybody thereafter, okay, fine, understand it. They may not have done all that great so far or as of yet. But you're not fighting for them to get better. You're fighting for them to stay exactly where they are and then worse, you're fighting for them to fall farther behind. That's not how you get better. You aren't even trying to compete at this time. We compete to win. Our conference doesn't even show up to compete. They don't even want a, a trophy, period, for even showing up. It's sad, and it should be, and the way I see it, it should be against the law. Because in the bylaws that they put in there, they're breaking their own laws. So, hey, we'll see what happens in court. But everybody seems to think, well, it's the big bad ACC and ESPN backs them. They've done nothing wrong. They've been perfect. Okay. We'll see. I, I, I don't know what else to tell people. This is not hard to see. They're doing it right in front of your eyes. They're literally telling you we aren't worth anything as a conference. And we ain't going to fight for our people in our conference. Every time that they have the opportunity to do so, they do not. That's all I got on. I'm so tired of this crap because they're not. <laughs> we, we're making them money. Like, it's not like we're we're benefiting more than anyone else. The only ones benefiting is the conference. I don't think any of the major schools and major universities that are here are getting paid what they're worth. But especially Florida State and Clemson and Miami, you can't tell me that we're not worth what Rutgers is. No one will ever get me to believe that. Vanderbilt. And I'm not trying to pick on anyone's university. It's just what we bring to the table versus what a lot of these other schools bring to the table. It's it's not comparable. And it's also unfair. Well, the way our conference treats every one of its members is unfair. If you're an SEC member or a Big Ten member, count your blessings. Because if you were in the crap hole that we're in, you would be griping the exact same way. Take your hate out of it for Florida State or whomever the team is and put yourself in their shoes and you tell me what you would do in reaction and how would you feel if you were getting treated like a redheaded stepchild. Another component to this you just hit on, Chris, the ESPN factor in this. And this is where I think – ESPN let down the ACC and the ACC didn't do anything about it. The ACC didn't fight and the ACC didn't manage its own launching of a network to make sure that it was going to be as successful as the SEC network. So in 2014, 
ESPN launches the SEC network. And that instantly was in as many homes as ESPN2, which is just a shade under ESPN. So basically, the SEC network launches and it's in as many homes as ESPN by about just about a million less. It's right there, like 95 million homes. And of course, football uh, is the big driver of these networks, uh, probably a little less in the ACC, you would you would think, because of the basketball prowess of the conference. But still, the, the football is the driver of both of those, but even more the SEC. So I don't know if ESPN just got complacent because it puts so much, so many resources, so much time, so much attention, so much care in making sure that it was going to Comcast and every major cable carrier to ensure that this SEC launch was going to be a success. And if you watch the SEC network, by and large, you can't tell if you're watching the SEC network or ESPN from a production standpoint because it's top-notch quality. Now, the ACC gets put together about four years later, five years later, and I'm well aware of how it went. And if you watch the ACC network, if you saw the numbers of cable subscribers to the ACC network, I don't know if ESPN just got fat and lazy and figured, hey, we pulled this off four years ago. This is going to be easy. We've already done it. We don't have to work. We don't have to build relationships. We don't have to get out there and hustle and make sure this happens. Or they just thought, you know what? The SEC drives football a lot harder than than uh, the SEC, SEC paid them to produce conference. it. So, ACC paid comp freaking Raycom to produce theirs. That's what it exactly. is. Exactly. So with the ACC network, we've got this. It'll be fine. And it gets launched to a fraction of the homes uh, in 2018, 19, whatever the year was. Uh, I know I was still there uh, at the time uh, versus what happened with the SEC launch. Well, part of it, too, is just them, try, again, the the nepotism, um, you know, trying to take care of your son who was with Raycom Sports and trying to make sure that in Jefferson or formerly Jefferson Pilot, I remember Jefferson playing games, the, watching the game, the replay games when I played on, on Jefferson Pilot. But those things, trying to get those to get over to ESPN so where you could help save your kid from his screw up. And it just, again, it's so many layers in all of this where you're just like, yo, this is crazy how this even started off. Now, when they created the ACC network, and this is really when ESPN should have known something was on, was going wild. And here's the, here's the reason why. If it's not picked up by Comcast, it's not going to be a successful network. Or it's going to always be small time. Comcast is, one, is the largest cable provider in the United States. It literally is... So imagine Florida State and Miami being two of the bigger brands in the ACC, and you put their game on the ACC network, and everybody in the state of Florida, like now, Mark, you're in the, you're, you move. Are you, you Spectrum or Comcast? Uh, I would be Spectrum. So again, if you don't have Spectrum, which is literally I-4, the, just straight down the middle of the state, you don't watch the ACC now for most of the time, unless you buy YouTube TV, which is the big reason why I bought YouTube TV is because I wanted to see FSU games or I wanted to see other different things. Um, and that's about it. So like the, from a business perspective, it's just not a good, it, it just started off the wrong way. Um, whereas the SEC network was picked up by Comcast and was done, was, it had a, had a bunch of different I don't really outside of that, that's really where the, what it all comes down to. It's um it was it was doomed from the start. It was a failed um a failed venture from a failed television company. It, it, it's the equivalent of what was it? When I was growing up, I used to see the WB in this in um UPN commercials. They ended up merging, become the CW. Their shows were great, but they were low budget because they weren't on top. Like that, they weren't in major networks. They were only in certain areas, so they didn't have the funds coming in. So while you have the SEC network, which is nationwide, even if you don't care about the SEC in California, you get the SEC network. Um, and so they made it a, a um, you had to buy it, but for the most part, it was everywhere. It um, 
it, 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 that's why our stuff looks like, like their stuff looks like a CBS production. It looks like a high quality ESPN production. Meanwhile, the ACC looks like you're you're watching um, Seven Heaven, which ironically, fast forward to this year, I know how we're going to show we care about the conference. We're going to put them on. What's the what's the thing I said? Oh, we are on the CW, right? In that with the game, yeah. <laughs> our games come on right at like we played Syracuse. That was a not Syracuse. We played um, North Alabama right before um, Gilmore Girls. <laughs> so it was just like you know the third rock from the sun or whatever other old nineties TV show that they wanted to put on from there. So it's all um, it's wild. It's it's a wild um, experience. Amazon links in the description section of all the videos, folks. When you shop on Amazon, please use the link that we provide. It is completely transparent, folks. You might as well use that. Help us grow and build the network. Uh, we got Chris Frazier here from Spiratics. Chris, what is going on at uh, Spiratics this week? Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to be able to do my shows. Um, just depends on how everything works. This has been the absolute roughest uh, uh, that I've ever had to go through to try to move. Um, everything just seems to go wrong, but I don't give up, and we don't know how to do nothing but fight it. So we will eventually get moved, but I've so far been able to do all of my shows on Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. I even did extra yesterday. I was on uh, Georgia's show, The Renegade Report, and then I was on James's show um, at Den Media Group last night. So I had doubled up, um, and then I was able to finally make it on another Wednesday show here. So Mondays and Thursdays at Spirit Addicts at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, we might do a special episode based off of what news I think pops tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Thursday, anyway. Yep. yep. So it'll be perfect for my show, anyway. So we'll see how it goes. But that's all we've got going on right now. We're trying to keep up with everything and give the information as accurate as possible. Y'all may have it to is, go a little early or something tomorrow, depending on when it drops. <laughs> it is on the banner, everyone. Uh, Chris at Spear Addicts, Sunday, 4 30 Eastern, Monday and Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. George, Renegade Report. Yes, sir. We're like a day off there. So we do Tuesdays and Fridays at 7 Eastern uh, and then Sundays, usually around noon. Uh, like Chris said, he joined us yesterday. We had our buddy Tiny Hat join us at the end of the show. We're working on a little kind of 30 to 40 minute show that's a little bit more fun to add to the channel. Uh, we've had several former roles on in the past couple weeks. So get over there. It's at the Renegade Report right here on YouTube and renegadereport.substack.com. Uh, we sure appreciate you guys getting over there and subscribing and all that good stuff, uh, and we'll keep the content coming. Big game. Um, Samo, Samo, uh, had a, like Chris said, um, had a great show with me and him. Um, got my uh, live stream suspended for I don't know how <laughs> long. Hopefully it was just a day. Um, I learned something about you. Do not end your show with you shooting a gun. It um, doesn't, even if it's at an inanimate object. Um, YouTube is not a fan of the Second Amendment rights, I'm guessing, but it is what it is. Um, I, I, got, I learned my lesson. I can, uh, we uploaded the show. We re-uploaded the show. We re-uploaded Big Games BS. Um, we have those things. Right now, we're on a, on a search to get to 6,000 subs. Once we get to 6,000 subs, we would do a $500 giveaway, Big Games BS, um, on one of our live shows. Hundred dollar giveaway, and then however many likes that show has on that day, we'll do a giveaway as well. We get the ten thousand subs before football season. We will be giving away a pair of tickets, a pair of season tickets, um, and just kind of go from there. Um, you know, season tickets and a parking pass. So people keep complaining about how the ticket prices are going up. I'm going to give you a pair of tickets, so like you can go get you, you can go sit sit there, and then just remember during the season. The Wednesday before every home game, we give away tickets. But the goal is to be at 10,000 subs by the end of the year, um, 500 um, members. Um, again, membership has its perks. Um, and the tailgate for the spring game, I'll, I'll be at practice tomorrow. So whether I'll be with Christmas for but I'll also probably do my own little um, impromptu show where we just talk about what I saw, um, how my, feelings, my, my feelings on it. Normally, I go to the first practice, which would have been yesterday. But I don't know if you guys can hear it. I, I know you can hear the echo a little bit, but there are children 
about 10 to 12 kids destroying this Airbnb right now uh, <laughs> that, you know, so because my kids have spring break, so I couldn't um, go to Tallahassee, but I'll be there for that. And then covering pro day on Friday and then, you know, same old, same old, man, just loving it. Um, it's almost, I feel like football is, is almost here again. Like it, like it never left. And spring tickets came coming in, huh? Getting close, less than a month. Feels good, man. Oh, James, I got you, uh, uh, I think two tailgate, uh, listen to me. I'm going to give you tailgate tickets to your own tailgate. Uh, I've got <laughs> two it. champion club tickets for you. Oh, don't. Good. I didn't have those, so I'm glad I have those right now. So that would be, that'd be amazing. Um, and then, but yeah, man, just, just again, I got to tell people, it's, it's fun to win in Florida State's in that trajectory, I don't know if anybody's watched the 2020. I judge our season coming up based upon the schedule, not necessarily the roster. The roster, I think, is good. But, um, you know, um, 2024 should be good. 2025 should be also good. Uh, I think whatever we do in 2024, we should be able to do that in um, 2025 and just continue to move forward. Mike's doing a pretty good job. Get this recruiting, continue to grow faster and – um, and it just kind of saved this vote because Alabama's coming back for what was theirs. Um, I don't know if y'all, you know, Alabama's getting a, there's a couple guys who left Bama in the transfer portal that are, that they, Bama's coming back for the, for those guys to, to come back. Hopefully we, we pass that. Yeah, that statement by uh, the coach is pretty funny. He's like, you know, he only just, you know, crippled our entire NIL department that, you know, managed to scrape up enough money to get here and, and left with it. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, I forget what he said that the silver lining was, but it was pretty funny. There wasn't much of a silver the lining there. He, he didn't have the playbook, which nobody. There you go. Really, there you go. Nobody's really, nobody's afraid of the, the offensive prowess. That, um, that's what he was tongue in cheek saying that we don't have to change anything in the offense now. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, yeah, that was a good joke. I didn't realize Kirk Ferentz was a damn comedian, but that was that was a real smart sentence right there. Uh, was that the offensive that. coordinator for Iowa? Is that what we're talking about? The head coach. They finally the fired his son, I think. That was but, uh, but they're okay. keeping the playbook. <laughs> so I've guess- been there since before I got. There. Were they complaining about how much they paid the the offensive lineman from Alabama? Now he's going back. Like a hundred thousand, they're freaking over. <laughs> Here's the thing, and James knows this as well as I do, and I know this for like especially on this kid for a fact. What are we talking about? He ain't been there long enough to get paid. Ding ding ding. His um, dad didn't get paid the the whole amount up front. I know that for another fact. So what are we? Anyways, uh, don't don't try to make the kid look bad. I mean, Colorado at least was a class act when DJ Lundy was there, and then he's like, you mm-hmm. know what? I don't like the way this looks. I'm going back home. Somebody brought that up to me too. I was about, like, I was nervous, but they're like, we just did that with DJ Lundy. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, okay. That was me last night. So, like, yeah, oh, that was you. Okay, yeah, that was gonna say. If I didn't pick on DJ, then I won't. I, I won't pick on this guy. Same. That's why I couldn't make any jokes. Felt the same thing. Yeah, I've got no investment in it for sure. We're talking Alabama. We're talking uh, Iowa there. But I got to say, it's just a bit annoying. But, uh, you know, he's broken no laws or anything. But uh, he's committed to Iowa for how many months? And then he flips the day before signing day. And then he plays the season at Alabama. Then he jumps to Iowa. Regular old Manny Diaz, ain't he? He goes through the whole hero <laughs> welcome and all of that, and then he's off to Alabama, just yeah. like Manny Diaz. Make up your it's mind. It's a way to. It's a way to. It's a. It's and, a uh, very, very easy way to get rid of him. But the problem is, everybody, like people, fail. This is why athletes are entitled. As an athlete, former athlete, I'm saying, athletes are entitled because we treat athletes and, and entertainers differently than we treat everybody. We will stay if I was eight, if I'm 18 years old and I become and I join a truck driver's union, or if I become this or I become that, I pay taxes, I pay my union dues, I vote as a union, I do this other thing. The only time people say, "Oh well, they got to pay taxes," "Oh well, they got to do this," "So they got," is when it comes to student athletes. All of a sudden, the 18 year old that can join the military and pay taxes and do all this now he's inept 
to be able to do these things. You could actually have the argument that somebody works for the university if you just treat them like what they are. They, it, it's, they do everything else. If I if I was if I signed for the state, if I was playing for the state right now, I represent the university everywhere I go. Hey, even now, if I go out there and I slap fire out of my youngest kid for doing something that he wasn't supposed to do, they're not going to just say James Coleman, regular dude with some podcast that nobody listens to. They're going to say because there's not going to get clicks. They're going to say James Coleman, former student at former Florida State Seminole fullback, blah blah blah. And it's going to get. I'm going to make ESPN for something that I might have made one mistake as opposed to everything else. We talk about these young men all the and women now all the time. But we don't treat them like that. Instead of negotiating these these billion dollar TV contracts, treat it just like the NFL. I'm with you. Don't give them 51 49 split. Give them a 30%, a 70 30 split. Like the school keeps 70 or the conference keeps 70, and then 30% gets paid in, in payouts. Then you pay the guys. And then you ain't got to worry about collecting. Well, you still have the, you still have all the shading that's going on. That's always been there with football, but it will be a little bit more in front. And you can put these guys on terms. You can put them on a three to five, the year term once they sign out of high school. Because you have a true, a what people don't realize is you actually have a true contract. What these NIL deals are, these are not employment contracts. Get it through your souls. It is a difference between an employment contract and a marketing deal. The only thing that they're required to do is whatever that marketing deal says. And one of the rules is you cannot pay for play. So if it says I got to show up to 10 events in Iowa in order to get paid, as long as I show up to my 10 events in Iowa, I should be getting paid. Or Iowa's an idiot for not having some kind of, their collective's an idiot for not having a contingency policy in play. Me and Chris have had to, had to explain contracts to a couple kids about these contingency policies that some of these collectives have. To where if you decide that you want to bounce, you can bounce. You just sign another deal. You just gonna make sure you gonna have another tax on your ass that you are gonna have to pay uh, because you, you you can't you ain't gonna double dip with a lot of these schools. So, but it could all change tomorrow, but they won't because the only way they'll do it is if actually what's coming out for the NCAA now. I don't know what's gonna come first: Florida State getting out of ACC or the NCAA losing their antitrust because that's something that's that they're coming for real quick. Yeah, since we, just before we, I know we're at time, but before we get out of here, since we highlighted the kid that went and left back, let's also highlight Troy Dannon, who spent five months as Washington's athletic director, saw the Huskies reach a national title game, um, lose Kalen to board Alabama, fires the basketball coach. Now he's off to Nebraska. So um, these these adults are, are much worse and to what James was saying. Uh, they need to be highlighted and pointed out just because they don't suit up for the university. They're a lot more destructive when they like to uh, play their games. Like I mentioned earlier with Manny Diaz doing the same thing to Temple a few years back. So it goes both ways. Absolutely, it does. It does. Um, I could counter that, but we don't have time. Right. All right. That's I was smart with that. George at the Renegade Report. Of course, that is the place to be for Florida State football coverage, as it is with Den Media Group and Big Game James Coleman, Chris Frazier, Spear Addicts. Appreciate these guys where they go. So get to those platforms and support there. We get them all here at one time for one hour every Wednesday. So it's it's great for me and what we do here at the Voice of College Football. We'll see you back here next Wednesday. In the meantime, soak up everything that these guys say concerning Florida State and the ACC. We'll see you next Wednesday.